Hi, my name is Marcus. This talk is Wrapping Go in Python. Hi, everybody. So first, start off with a few introductions. My name is Marcus, which we all established. My, hey. my favorite fictional character is Batman. And currently, my favorite music quote is, even the boxing critics know that if I get off to a rocky start, I'll always have a rocky finish. Eminem. Thank you. Um, another thing I want to say about this talk is that it is all on GitHub, including the code and the slides. So if you guys wanted to follow along as well, you guys could just go to this link. I'll leave it up there for a little bit just so you guys can get to it. And my social handle is crazecom everywhere. So um, Twitter, email, Google Plus, and anything else that, that exists. All right, I'm moving on. So we have the talk overview, just to make sure everybody's in the right place. I'm going to go over building shared objects in Go, calling object files from Python, going over the possibilities that exist, and then ending with some concluding remarks. Sound good? Yeah. All righty. Section one. It can be done. We are going to write a Go program, make a shared object, pro, shared object file out of that program, and then call it from Python. So what is a shared object file? Um, shared objects, you, consider, you can consider them shared libraries because they're a source code that other programming languages and programs can pull in and use at will. Shared libraries are that are libraries that are loaded by programs when they start. In terms of convention, these files are usually kept in a special place and given special names. You can read more about them at the link. For our purposes, we need to know that when you build a shared object file in Go, um, it has an ending of .so, just for the most part. So, Let's go build a hello world share file in Go. Can everybody, can everybody see this? Should I make it bigger? Okay. <laughs> that big enough or bigger? We good? All righty. Section one. So I'm gonna show you the files. These are just like the GitHub repo. Um, we're gonna open and look at Hello World Go. So for a Go pro pro program, if you guys do not know, they have some formal syntax, different syntax from Python. You start everything off with a package. You have your imports after that. We have to import C because we're using C to export um, the Go program and make a shared object file. So there's the import line. Here it looks like a comment and technically through the Go syntax it is a comment. However, for us to export and be able to use a function, we have to label it this way with export and then the name of the function. Here's the function hello world. It just prints the screen hello world. Everybody's probably seen a hello world program before, so I'm gonna skip over that one. All right, close that. So the main magic is being able to build the SO file. And to do that, we use a Go command called build. This is the basic syntax of it. It starts off with Go build dash o output, output file, which is the dot so, the build mode, which is a C shared source, and then you have the source file afterwards. In the repo, I put all of the commands in, in the command.sh. 
right there. And I'm just going to run that file, which is going to run this command, so we can just build it right now. Oh, the Go command is in here. So for you people using Go, um, I use Go version manager to manage my Go uh, versions. DVM list, I have a few different versions. One thing that I forgot to mention that is important to note that the ability to create shared object files exists from Go 1.5 and onward. Um, and this, in this talk, I'm gonna be using Go 1.6. Let's try this again. All right, if everything went smoothly, we should have a .so file. Also, we have a .h file, which is something that's also created when you build a shared object file. So the next part is going into Python. And in Python, we have to be able to call this .so file. The way we do this by using the C types module is in the standard library. Now, the way it's described in the documentation, C types is a foreign function library for Python. It provides C compatible data types and allows calling functions in DLLs, DLLLs, or shared libraries. It can be used to wrap these libraries in pure Python. So we're going to use that to um, call our .so file that we just created. I'm going to open the Python file just so we can go through it real quick. Everybody's on the same page. We have our import, C types, which we just talked about. Um, in order to import the file, we have to know where it's located. So we're importing operating system and then creating the path to that file. We are then loading it using C types. And then the loaded variable has the exported function name of hello world, which we exported in the Go program. And then we're just calling. We want to see if this is possible first. So let's do this. Python 3. Dun da da da. All right. All right, thank you, thank you, thank you. So just a little recap of what we did. We used Go to create a program. We then exported that program to a .so file, shared object. We then went into Python, dy dynamically linked that .so file, called the exported function, and then printed something to screen. Hello world. Uh, we just did that. Section two, the possibilities. All right, so an overview of this section. Um, now that I know, well, now that we know that we can call Go at, in Python, just wrap it. I'm curious as to what we can pass back and forth between Python and Go and Go and Python. So I wanted to go through a list of examples, of types, of experiment, let's say, because these are all really just experiments. Let's start with integers. Section two. Integers. So the basic format for all of these sections is that I'm gonna have an input file and an output file where one just focuses on trying to pass items from Python to Go and the other one focuses on trying to pass items from Go to Python. Let's look at the Python file first. It's pretty similar to the hello world. We have the imports, we have the OS, find the path, load the library. The only thing really different in this is that we're taking a user input, we're converting it to an integer, and then in the lib, which is the shared object variable, we're calling the exported function and then passing the user input into it, which is now an integer. The Go 
program is pretty simple as well. Same as the hello world except for we have a different function name, different export name, and we're passing in a variable, a number that is an integer, and then we're printing it to screen. Let's see if this works. Python 3. Anybody have a favorite number? Integer? 28. Ooh, 28 came out loud and proud. <laughs> <laughs> All right, 28 seemed to be able to pass. So we just took an integer, passed it from, took it from Python, passed it to Go, and then printed it to screen. So it seems as though we can do integers from Python to Go. Let's try output. Int. Look at the Python file. Everything's pretty much the same except for this line. We're calling int output, passing it into answer, and then trying to print answer. All right, the go one is a little bit different. I wanted to try to print a random integer, so I had to generate, uh, the, had to start this pseudo random generator. What's that here? What we really care about is this one, the exported function. In output, it sends out an integer, and that is a random integer below 10,000. Let's see if it works. Python 3. Dun, da, da, da. We have numbers being passed. So we just showed here is that we can pass integers from Python to Go and go to Python. Okay, what's next? Let's, uh, let's look at Booleans. Try Booleans next. Same basic format. input or output file, just like I explained earlier. Let's look at the Python file. Ah. So in doing this, what I sort of discovered is that when passing Booleans back from, wait, wait, wait. Oh, Python input, yes. We have this line for user input. True if the random integer is zero, if it's one and zero, which is falsy in Python, it's going to omit false. So we're passing true or false in a random order to the Go program and seeing how Go handles it. And now let's open the Go program. takes in a Boolean and just prints it. Simple enough. All right, we got a false, we got a true, we got a true, we got a true, we got a false. We, we, we can pass this, we can pass Boolean from Python to Go. Let's check the reverse. Huh. Thank you, thank you, thank you. All magic. <laughs> Let's look at the Python file first. Same basic principle. Come down to this line, calling the function, and passing it into answer, and then printing answer. Same basic principle as the Python program. Um, creating a random number between zero and one. If it's equal to one, then I'm returning true. If it's equal to zero, I'm returning false. And I'm passing that into Python. I want to see if it can handle it. Err? One, 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 one. Hey, there we go, we got a zero. So what we see now is that when the Booleans are being passed from 
go to Python, they're represented in terms of zero and ones, which is very understandable. Zero can be false and one can be positive, just like in Python that's falsy and truthy. That seems reasonable. All right, let's try, let's go with strings. Strings are interesting. So as you see, there are a lot of files in here because I made a lot of different attempts. Not everything went over smoothly, just to prepare you guys. <laughs> we have, we're gonna go over string input, string input round two, and string input round three. All right, since there are different rounds, I have to note that at times I'm calling different SO files just to see if, try to max things to see if things work. This is taking the user input as a string and then passing the string, this regular string to Go. Let's look at the Go for program and see what it does. Simple, takes in a string, prints out a string. Let's try it. Anybody have a favorite string? Seven. <laughs> it didn't like seven. It didn't like seven. <laughs> so one thing I found, like I gave you guys a warning earlier, is that everything doesn't pass well. Early we saw that int can be passed without being converted, but it seems that for strings, something is missing. So let's look at round two. Round two. All right. So in round two, what I did differently is I tried a random function that I saw in the C-types module. Now the C-type module, if you go to the documentation, has a list of different conversion types from Python to C-types. This one says create string buffer. I'm gonna try to create a string buffer. It's sending hello and the buffer has 10, uh, allocation of 10. And it's going to the same Go program, so we don't have to look at the Go program again. We can just run this and see what happens. Ring. Uh, ground. Oh, input. Round two. It didn't like that. Hmm. Hmm. Runtime error. Hmm. Grow slice, cap out of range. That sounds very cryptic. Let's move on. <laughs> <laughs> String input round three. All right, round three. We have a different program for Go. Let's try something Go. Mix th things up there and see if it works. We're going to String input C Go. All right. We're going to mix something up here. We're going to try C char P, which I believe creates strings, C type string, strings that are in the type of C, or however way you want to phrase that sentence. And we're passing that into the Go function. <laughs> C go go. All right, so here we also did something different. C char. So apparently, when I was going through some of the documentation, it's not all that great on the Go side, but we have C chars. This is a pointer. So we're taking a pointer to a C char, and then they have functions in Go that can convert C types to Go types. So C, Go string, name, will convert a string in C to Go. Let's see what happens. Clear this, it's kind of, uh, that's not clear. There we go. Wrong.
round three. Hey, I'm excited for myself on that one. It works. So you can, oh, wow. All right, so we covered strings. That was input. Let's go to string output. String output. We're running a little low on time, so I'm going to go skip through some of the rounds. Rip. String output round two. So let's start there. Round one is never good for anybody. Round two. So for round two, we learned about the C Go stuff. So that's going to be in the output of the Go program. We're going to use that in the Go program. And we learned about the C stuff for C types, so C char. And we're going to try to print out the value. Not, nothing much has changed. Here, nothing much has changed. Just returning the C pointer string. And output. Round two, we were able to pass a string from Go to Python. It comes out as a byte string. Eh, semantics. We passed it. So just a quick summary of things that you can and cannot pass. Lists and dictionaries, they don't have a type conversion in Go, so you can't pass those. So we can just skip that section. For floats, I was able to pass floats from Python to Go, but I haven't figured out how to pass floats from Go to Python. I'm still working on that. So let's be practical. If you wrap and go in Python, the reason why you wrap and go in Python is probably because you want to use some of Go's features. Let's say Go's speed or Go's concurrency. Well, let's see if we can do that. Oh, and there's a question down there. Since we're low on time, I'll just tell you the answer. We can, it's the question of can we pass multiple variables, an arbitrary amount of variables, to Go? Like args we do in Python. The answer is no. When you try to compile that, it tells you it's not supported yet. So hopefully in the future it will be. But as of right now, we can't do it. So in section three, I created a program for primes that just check to see whether a number is prime. It's not complex. It just goes through all the numbers. We've seen this before. And I'm going to export that and see how fast it is in Python. Just a quick overview of what the file looks like, calling the prime so, passing an integer, seeing what the answer is. Integer 17. Okay, we know that it can find primes. 16. Oh, one. It doesn't like one. 16, false. Let's throw in a bigger number. One, two, three, four. I forgot a one in the front. Let's put a one in the front. Oh, sorry. One, two, three, four, five. False. That came back kind of fast. Reasonably so. I'm not going to benchmark it. So let's look at the other program. Um, that is, oh cool, one minute left. That is prime channels. So the way to do concurrent programming in Go is to use Go routines and channels. And I'm not gonna go over in specific what those are, but here's a quick example. To make a Go routine, we take a function and put Go in front of it. Ta-da! 
for channels, what they are in concept is like a tube. You pass numbers through one end and they come out the other. And you can put channels between different functions. So what this program is going to do, prime channel, just Python file real quick. It's going to print out all the primes. It's going to count the number of primes below a certain number. We want to see how fast we can do it and concurrently and go and then just send the answers to Python. Let's start with 40. 12, that was kind of fast. Start with, wow. Let's go a little bit bigger. The algorithm is it's still using the same algorithm as before, the slow one, so it should take some time, but as you can see, it's kind of fast for computing a lot of those numbers. That will return eventually. In the meantime, <laughs> The conclusion is, uh, do, uh, conclude? Okay. The conclusion is that doing this is somewhat difficult, however, it's really kind of cool, and I like it. Also, if you don't have to explicitly pass arguments between the two languages, you're golden. You can have like an intermediate file, a JSON file, a config file that you can read from in those respective languages, and you don't have to worry about all this C stuff. That is the end of my talk. Uh, question? How many primes?